Hello, and welcome to Simple Tech Reviews, where we give you simple, straightforward, and easy to understand reviews about everyday items you can purchase online. On this occasion, we have the Togart X5 Android 4.4.2 KitKat rearview mirror dash cam and reversing camera. This is a replacement rearview mirror that you mount on top of your vehicle's existing mirror and it promises to give you quite a few interesting features. I'll give you some basic information about the device and then we'll go into more details I think could be useful if you are in the market to purchase a device like this one. For starters, I should mention that there are a few different models of this mirror that look practically identical on the outside, but they do come with different components inside, which in the end is what really matters. This particular unit comes with an all-winner A23 dual-core processor inside. Now if you're like me, that doesn't really say anything about how this unit will perform, but right off the bat I will tell you that for what this device is intending to do, a dual-core processor is barely enough. We'll go more into this a little bit later. Moving on with some additional specs, it comes with 378 megs of RAM and 512 megs of internal system storage. Now please pay attention to those two numbers because we will talk about memory shortly. Built-in storage capacity is 6GB and it has an SD slot for up to 64GB of external storage. It has a 5-inch screen running a resolution of 854x480 which is adequate for this size of device. The internal battery is around 900mAh and it lasts for a couple of minutes after you unplug it. There is a built-in accelerometer which is used to automatically save video files in case of any sudden impacts on the vehicle. Inside the package you will find the mirror, a USB lighter socket plug for power, an external GPS antenna and the backup camera with an off cable to route it to the back of your car. After you install the mirror you will notice that it has a bluish tint and in comparison with your stock mirror objects would look a lot closer than they did. It does reflect the view behind you quite well, but it will take you one or two drives to get used to it. Now I'm going to boot up the device so you can see real time the boot up process. This particular unit takes about 30 seconds to start up and during that time no functions are available. That means you can't use a DVR, no backup camera and no navigation until it's fully loaded. As soon as it starts, it will go straight into the DVR mode as it's set by default to start recording the video. You can change it so that it does not start recording the video right away, but it will always boot into the DVR first. The front camera will record 720p and 1080p, but in reality there really isn't much difference as far as the video quality for each resolution. The screen is capacitive touch and it does respond quite well. Before you install the backup camera, you do have to test the vertical orientation to make sure that the video looks upright, because once you install it, you cannot flip the video vertically from the device, only horizontally. Now from the main menu, you can select any application you want to install to use as a navigation app. In my case, I have installed Waze. You can also use the FN transmitter to play music stored on your device or any other sound straight into your car stereo. You can go into the Android settings which have some options disabled and you can directly look at your recorded files and see all your installed applications. Now, as I said before, I think the idea behind this device is very neat, it's a really good one, but uh, we're gonna go into couple more details as why this particular unit is not quite there yet. I would also like to give you some buying tips if you're looking to purchase a unit like this one. And like I mentioned before, there's a couple of things you need to pay attention to. One of those things is memory, as I said before. When you go to any online store, be it Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, and you look for one of these items, you'll see that the descriptions say something like, 512 RAM or 512 NAND flash. Do note that here they're not talking about RAM like what you use in your computers for memory, no. What that basically means is how much 
internal system storage the device has. So in other words, if they say the device has 512 megs of RAM, that means it's 512 megs for the Android operating system, the preloaded applications, and whatever is left is what you have to install your apps. So needless to say that 512 megs is not that good. After what you get left, it's actually borderline usable. The mirror also has 6 gigabytes of what they call built-in memory or ROM. And this is only useful if you want to preload your unit with things like music, photographs, or videos. So in other words, you probably won't be using it very much. What you do need to look at when you're purchasing one of these are units that are advertised as having one gigabyte of RAM. This means that in the end, you're gonna have about 800 megabytes or so to install your favorite apps. Another thing you need to look at carefully is the processor. Most of these units will come with all winner processors. I know that doesn't say much to the average consumer, but this is very important because you need to make sure what you're getting. If your device has a single core processor, such as the all winner A10, then you won't be able to do any multitasking at all. There's just not enough power from a single core, and I would not recommend buying a unit with a processor like this one. A dual core CPU like the all winner A23, like the one in this unit, is the least you can get away with and still have a functional unit, albeit with some slowness and lag. But what you really should be looking for on your device is for it to come with at least a quad core processor, such as the all winner A33. Having a quad core processor will save you a lot of frustration when it comes to using the device. So, as a recap, this device is a really nifty idea, and if you're looking to purchase one, again, I would recommend that you choose a quad-core unit with one gigabyte of internal storage or RAM, as they call it, and then you will have a decent working unit. I would wish that manufacturers for these Android units would see that making these with a tiny NAND flash built-in RAM and a much larger ROM is rather useless. Instead of giving us 512 megabytes NAND and a 6 gigabyte ROM, Give us one single system storage with 8, 16, or 32 gigabytes of internal space to install your applications. And no more single or dual core processors. Gotta be at least quad or octa-core processors. This way more people will buy the products because they will meet high quality standards. And that's it for now. I hope that you found this review informative and that it helped you make a better decision for purchasing your Android Mirror DVR or similar device. And if you are a seller or manufacturer wanting to promote your items, you may contact me on the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next review. I'll leave you now with some sample footage from the camera.